Hey everyone, I'm Behfor here, and a few weeks ago I had to transfer my desktop computer from room 1, where my wireless router was located, to room 2, where there was no wireless router. This was a computer with no wireless network card, so I made a whole video about how I used my old Linksys wireless router to set up a repeater bridge, so the computer can have internet connection in the new location, which was room 2. I had some people ask me some questions or had some difficulties while they were trying to do this. So in this video I'm going to add some points that hopefully can answer some of the questions and help to prevent any mistakes that we might do when setting up a repeater bridge. The first thing I want to talk about is the subnet mask, which is very important. Because in this solution every device on the network, including the primary and secondary wireless routers and all the client devices connected to them either wirelessly or with wires are going to be on the same subnet. Therefore the IP address we choose for the secondary router should also be on the same subnet as the primary wireless router. For example, if the primary router is 192.168.1.1 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, the secondary router could be any available IP address in the range of 192.168.1.2 all the way to 254. If the primary router is 192.168.0.1, then the secondary router should be anywhere in between 192.168.0.2 all the way to 254. Let's say the primary is 192.168.0.1 and we set the secondary to 192.168.1.2. Because they're not on the same subnet, we won't be able to access the web interface of the secondary router anymore. Even though everything else, including the wireless bridge and the repeater, might still work fine. The second thing I wanted to talk about is the SSID name. In that video, the primary SSID was room 1, and I set the repeater's SSID to room 2. I just wanted to point out that it is possible to have the same SSID name and also same password for the secondary router. This can even make the roaming process easier. That basically means when the wireless client moves away from the primary router and gets closer to the secondary router, it can automatically switch to the secondary router since they have the same SSID name and password. Whether to use the same SSID name or a different one, it very much depends on your network design and network requirements. Alright, so that brings us to the subject of channel planning. Because the repeater and the main router have to be on the same channel, it is very important to choose a channel that is least crowded and least utilized in your environment. This is something that should be configured on the primary router, and the DDWRT router will automatically use the same channel. I personally use a software called Insider to determine the best possible channel in the environment. Finally, let's talk about the secondary router's placement. First of all, I personally found it easier to first put the secondary router as close as possible to the primary router while I'm configuring the repeater bridge. After I'm done and tested to make sure the repeater bridge is working fine, then I would take it to its new location, which obviously should be within the range of the primary router. If I'm only using the secondary router as a wireless bridge but not a repeater, which basically means only wired devices are going to be connected and it's not broadcasting any SSIDs, then as long as it is located within the range of the primary router, it should be fine. However, if I'm using it as a repeater, ideally I would set it closer to the edge of the coverage area. How can I determine that? Well, using a Wi-Fi analyzer software can be helpful, and if that's not a possibility, what I sometimes do is to start a video call on a wireless client device which is connected to the primary router. Then I walk away from the primary router and as soon as I detect any quality issues like freezing, delays or dropped calls, I know I'm at about the right location. Okay, these were a few things I thought maybe I should add to the previous video. Hopefully they answered some of the questions. But please let me know if you still have any questions in the comments down below. I'll be more than happy if I can be helpful. And please give it a thumbs up and share it if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you very much and I see you next time.